there is something missing from our world. The amazing animals that time has left behind. But what if we could bring them back? What if extinction didn't have to be forever? We're going back in time on a safari with a difference. As wildlife adventurer Nigel Marvin plunges into prehistory to rescue creatures on the brink of extinction. His plan is to bring them back to the safety of the present and give them a second chance. His next adventure is into the Ice Age, where he'll come face to face with a woolly rhino, survive a showdown with a colossal cave bear, and solve the mystery of what is killing the last mammoth on Earth. Welcome to the ultimate wildlife sanctuary. Welcome to Prehistoric Park. Prehistoric Park is starting to come to life. Amongst the hills and valleys of this huge reserve, dinosaurs are getting used to their surroundings. One day, Nigel Marvin plans to breed extinct animals in captivity. But for now, he's starting off by only bringing a few of each species back to see how they get on in the 21st century. Nigel's planning his next adventure. Hello. He's decided to rescue one of the most famous of all extinct animals, the woolly mammoth, the long lost Ooh. relative of modern day <laughs> elephants. I adore elephants. And of course, they have a long history. There are many different species of the elephant family in the past, the mastodons and mammoth. People think they had the same family life, the same social history. But what I want to do is travel back in time and find out whether that's true. And maybe even bring a woolly mammoth or two back to prehistoric park. Would you like to meet a woolly mammoth? You would, wouldn't you? <laughs> As in any conservation uh -oh. project, it's the most endangered animals Nigel wants to rescue. So he's got to travel back to the time that mammoths were on their last legs. That was at the end of the Ice Age. Freezing plains were the home to huge herds of mammoth, but 10,000 years ago it all changed. Their world was turned upside down because of global warming. The ice was disappearing, and so were the mammoths. This is at the end of the last ice age, and what was happening, it was still cold, but the ice sheets, they were receding northwards, and the mammoths were going there too. According to all my research, the last surviving mammoths were found here, just east of the Urals in Siberia. By going back to the brink of extinction, he'll see for himself what killed off these magnificent beasts and get his chance to save the woolly mammoth. The time portal is set to take him back to the last ice age, 10,000 years ago.
Here in the Ice Age, the warming of the climate has already changed this world. What once was rich open grassland covered in grazing mammoths has now been invaded by dense forest. This is no place for a mammoth. And finding the last ones left alive is not going to be easy. But Nigel's in for a shock. At last, Mammoth. And there could be more than one. There's two. There's one down. And it looks like there's a mammoth trap or something there. The second one's not moving at all. Oh, what we'll do, we'll try to get in closer. But there's something not right. It looks like Ice Age hunters have beaten him to it. as much. This is a killing field. The hunters, they've dug a pit, covered it with snow. The mammoth's fallen in. They've speared her to death. There's another one staying by her dead herd mate. This could be one of the last mammoths remaining on earth. Listen. Oh, that is heartrending. She's making this grumbling sound. They do that with their stomach. She's trying to communicate to her dead herd mate. It's a stomach rumble, which they do. Of course, she's not going to get a response.
alive, but will she be strong enough to get back on her feet? You can tell a dog's healthy by a wet nose, and you've got a wet trunk. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> okay, keep calm. The ears are coming forward. Back off, back off. Even though she's woozy, you could still charge. Keep calm. She's not showing any aggression at all towards us. She's going back with her dead sister. It's so exciting she's up, but we've got to get her away from her sister to get her back to the park, and that's going to be difficult. The big question is, will the mammoth leave her Ice Age world and follow Nigel back to the 21st century? There's only one way to find out. Prehistoric park, but she's in urgent need of help. Prehistoric park's head vet Suzanne hasn't looked after a mammoth before, but she's hoping that what she knows about elephants will help. I've just given her a light sedative so she'll lie here and let me do this. She's got this really deep, horrible, looks like infected wound and she's got this thing stuck in it. I'm just trying to see if I can get it out. An important difference between mammoths and elephants is the layer of fat beneath the skin. In mammoths, it's an incredible three inches. She's got this really thick layer of fat, just, I guess because she's an Ice Age creature just to keep her warm, but it's meaning this is really hard to get out. It's like a spearhead or something. It's horrible. We'll treat it like we would with an elephant wound. We'll just, we'll just leave it open, not stitch it. Elephants, best not to stitch them. They'll just heal up. It takes a long time, but she'll just form a scar there. We need to give her another shot of antibiotics in a couple of days. Working. With the spear tip removed and the mammoth back on her feet, it looks like she's on the road to recovery. Nigel hopes that now she'll be ready to start her new life at the park. Later that day, she's moved to her enclosure. The team decide to call her Martha.
Well, she's just not eating anything at all. Nothing. What are you trying her no, with? We're trying her with new hay every day. And she's not interested. She really should have started eating now. Can you get Bob to get some fresh grass and try with that? Okay? Yeah, I'll go and see. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm not sure what the problem is at all. We moved her up here because we thought it'd be a suitable enclosure for her. It's where the elephants are, and they seem to like her up here, but she doesn't seem very happy. Her clinical exam's normal, her blood test results have been fine, her temperature's normal, her wound's okay, it's not infected. I just don't know what the problem is, and if she doesn't start eating soon, she's not going to be okay. Martha needs to eat well to regain her strength. If she doesn't, the infection might take hold again, and that could kill her. Back at the surgery, Suzanne does some more research. This is a fossilised mammoth's tooth, and this is a real elephant's tooth. And you can see they've got really similar grinding and wear patterns. So I don't think it's her teeth that's the problem. I think it still might be the grass, or it might be that mammoths have a different digestive system to elephants. I'm just not sure. Martha's getting weaker. Something needs to be done. Martha's seriously sick, and we've got to move quickly. My plan is to go back 150,000 years. At that time, mammoth populations were flourishing. There'd be lots of healthy animals. I can get data, find out what they're feeding on, what makes them healthy, and maybe we can save Martha. 150,000 years ago, the world was in the full grip of the Ice Age. Woolly mammoths were everywhere from the west of Europe to the east of Asia. Compared to his last trip, it's even colder. And because it's dry, Lots of different kinds of grass grow here. Nigel should have no problem finding out exactly what mammoths like to eat. It's a real different feeling to the last trip. No trees, perfect climate, perfect vegetation for mammoths, and they're flourishing. They're all females, much smaller tusks than the males. <laughs> you see, they're following the lead of one animal and she's the matriarch. She can be 50 or 60 years of age and she maintains cohesiveness in the herd. They stop when she stops, they sleep when she sleeps and they feed and drink when she does. Nigel still needs to retrieve the plant bag but now he's got his eye on something much bigger to take back to the park. This is his chance to save the Elasmotherium from extinction, but it means taking a huge risk and using himself as bait. Ethereum is now the latest addition to prehistoric park. Well, hey, Nigel. What's going on? I don't believe it. 
There's only you could go away and collect a few grasses and come back with something like that. He's magnificent, isn't he? Suzanne, you better get yourself over here. Nigel's got a little surprise for us. <laughs> Look at that. Come on, Martha. Come on, this is some prehistoric salad. Come on. Come on. Now, this is salad from the Ice Age. Come on. She just won't be enticed. She just won't feed at all. Oh. It's anthropomorphic to say it, but she looks lonely. And the mammoths that I saw, the females at least, they were always in big groups. There was aunts, there was grandmas, there's mums, there's calves, there's sisters. I would have brought another one back, but of course her sister was killed by the hunters. In elephant societies, it's only the bulls that are on their own, the cows, they're always with calves and other elephants. So maybe she needs some companionship. Could that be the answer? The reason that Martha's not eating is the fact that she's all alone. Some creatures are well suited to being on their own, like the Elasmotherium, who's settling in well to his new home. But just as elephants need to be close to their family, so do mammoths. Martha, barely able to stand up, is dying of loneliness. <laughs> 